Welcome back to the Arise interview, where we speak to the newsmakers as well as ordinary people doing extraordinary things around the world and featuring the voices at the heart of the stories. I'm Charles Anyegolu. Now, at the COP26 Climate Summit in Glasgow, you've probably seen and heard many political leaders giving speeches there, promising policy changes for the future. But there have also been speeches and actions by activists at the summit, people committed to advocating for a faster pace of change to deal with climate change. A lot of pushing and prodding to get the policymakers to move faster and take more decisive action to limit global warming. Well, one of them is a young Nigerian climate activist who's made impassioned calls to leaders in Nigeria and abroad to think of millions affected by climate change and of the devastating impact it is already having on the planet. She's the eco-feminist Jennifer Uchendu, who's been educating Nigerians on things like waste management and recycling, and has been leading a campaign to plant more trees in Nigeria. And she joins me now from the Climate Summit in Glasgow. Jennifer, thank you very much indeed for uh, joining us. Uh, first of all, what have you been focusing on at that Climate Summit in Glasgow where you are? Thank you so much for having me um, at COP26. I'm focused on two major things, um, to look at commitments around ending deforestation, of course, planting more trees. And I'm also focused on climate education for young people all over the world, particularly in Nigeria. So by half that measure, you've been successful because, I mean, a deal has been struck on deforestation. Uh, what's your reaction to that? Well, definitely, it's such a good news to hear that that has happened. World leaders are committing to end deforestation by 2030. But we, we've been used to rhetorics of lots of talks and less action. So really, um, I wouldn't say we're successful just yet until you know we get to 2030 and see how far we've come. But really, what we want to see from now until then is rapid and urgent actions. So we need to stop hearing about illegal legal logins or even legal logins in Nigeria. Lots of deforestation happening in northern Nigeria needs to end and um, urgent action now needs to be taken to ensure that trees are protected and more and more trees are planted all over Nigeria. And uh, what is your reaction? I, I presume you were there when President Buhari turned up and, and made a, a promise um, that or a pledge um, that you know Nigeria was going to try and uh, reach carbon zero by 2060. What was your reaction to that? You think that's realistic based on what you know? Well, I think it's ambitious, and um, if we really listen carefully, we would also hear that it was conditional. Conditional in the sense that we needed the technical support and also the financial support to reach that goal by 2060. However, we do know that Nigeria is a country where we hear a lot of policies, speeches and promises, but not a lot of actions being done. And to reach a goal of net zero by 2060 for a country like Nigeria, not just because we're neck deep in oil and in gas, but also because of corruption, we know that it's really ambitious. So I'm a bit skeptical on how are we really going to achieve this? Is this feasible? And are we really going to now put our money, our minds and political will where we've now sort of made this commitment? So skeptical is the word. Yes, and you're probably right to be skeptical um, because, I mean, judging from the last um, summit, uh, a lot of things that were promised have not been delivered. Nevertheless, there have been a number of other important promises um, from that COP26 summit beyond deforestation. We've heard, you know, a lot of um, talk about methane emissions to be cut back hard. We've heard about today earlier um, oil, coal and gas. Um, what, what do you make of all that? 
Well, definitely, I think coming to COP26, we all knew that it's a life or death situation. We all had to make this commitment. We had to like take ad urgent action towards you know what the next step is. We knew that if the world leaders miss it here, it's almost sort of doomed for everyone. And I guess we're starting to see that expectation come true in the level of ambition and also commitments that are coming through net zero and all of that. But also what is really, really important for young people like myself is the how. We don't just want to hear the what you're doing, but also the how, the plan. How would the monies be spent? What's the plan? How would young people be included? And how would communities and the most vulnerable who are already suffering for, from climate issues, how would they be supported all through? I guess that's where we still need a lot more clarity, a lot more detailed explanation from. But really, fingers are crossed and everyone is kind of optimistic and also skeptical on what's next and what would COP really bring for us after now. And uh, is your skepticism deepened by the fact that uh, China, Russia, India um, are all absent from that methane deal as well as the, the, the coal deal? I think Australia also absent from it. I mean, because it's been suggested that they could easily reach the goal and it's not too difficult to do. Definitely. And um, I don't know if it's something you've heard of, climate anxiety, which is something a lot of young people and youth activists like myself are experiencing. It's that emotional response to the idea that world leaders, um, particularly the world leaders in the West, the rich and powerful nations, aren't taking this um, issue as seriously as they should. They do not realize that you know economic growth and environmental protection really now has to go hand in hand because we're already in a crisis so just as you mentioned China China in particular you know when we saw the news when we saw the lack of participation on their end it was scary for me because if you don't have China who is a major 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 polluter in these conversations then we really have a long way to go we really have a big problem so you're definitely right so I mean Jennifer the, the politicians have now left and negotiations will now knuckle down to the technical work involved in notching up climate pledges. Um, what are you going to be doing for the balance of the week and a half that you've got in Glasgow? Definitely. Um, now that the politicians have left, I would be meeting with lots of civil societies and organizations looking at um, issues around gender, having a gender lens suite. The NDCs having um, youth rights in, involved in all of this conversation. So, and also looking at this intersection between mental health and climate change, which a lot of young people are experiencing. Um, I've just recently contributed to an article on Lancet who we where we interviewed over 10,000 young people all over the world looking at their emotional response to the climate crisis and I can confidently say that young people are frightened scared overwhelmed and even angry like in places like Nigeria so it's really a public health issue in the fact that leaders everyone all hands has to be on board with solving the climate crisis and really doing our bit to save the world and save ourselves as it were so all through the week I'll be attending events, events around planting trees and supporting at risk communities and also rethinking climate adaptation which is something that um, I've been even more passionate about over the years. The fact that we are now living in climate change and we need to, we need to help communities as much as we can with the mental strength and also um, whatever infrastructure we can do as, at community level to live with climate change and really adapt to the changes that we see are around us every day and uh, beyond the very interesting general points that you've made about what you're going to be doing for the rest of the time that you're in Glasgow tell us about the specific work that you've been doing with regard to climate change in Nigeria 
definitely very good question i mean i've been planting a lot of trees early this year um, i worked with susty vibes with support from the british high commission to plant about 5,000 trees in lagos and nigeria but also more importantly getting a lot of young people on board with the conversation so we realized that if more young people are aware of the problem particularly environmental problems then they will be more concerned and will have that needed participation of young people saying we need the right leaders in power we need leaders who are aware of this problem who are future oriented and progressive who can make you know feasible plans and policies that we can actually see actions over the coming years so my my uh, my focus has really been to work with young people as much as possible to plant trees to make um, a lot of um, advocacy and awareness around plastic pollution because that's also a big problem for us in Nigeria so it's been here and then of all of those actions in Nigeria. And uh, how difficult is it getting the general public beyond just young people to see climate change as an imminent danger in Nigeria? Definitely, even you know, beyond climate change, as little as um, plastic pollution, going to the markets, you know, the streets of Lagos or Abuja or Port Harcourt, and telling people that you know this problem is here, they would always refer to the poverty. They would always refer to hunger, unemployment, and health infrastructure that isn't you know where it should be in Nigeria. So we see that there's almost a disconnect with people saying environmental issues don't impact our day-to-day -day lives and that's where we know that we have more work to do to say this is why um, our problems are exacerbated by climate change food security for example is worsened by the changing climate and generally our security in Nigeria is having to explain and make um, these issues relatable to the average Nigerians that is what we do at Susty Vibes making this something that people then feel a part of they feel like if I don't throw my plastic you know in the gutter today then I'm contributing to helping with a healthy planet and at one way or the other I'm also supporting my health so it's explaining big technical issues like microplastics for example to the average Nigerian saying you know by throwing plastic in the ocean you're actually saving yourself because you can eat a fish that has plastics in its belly or something so it's explaining all of these issues and with climate change the work gets tougher because you have to explain and, and make and show relations with climate disasters that are happening you know, in, all, in other parts of Nigeria and telling them the impacts and telling them everyday, everyday actions that we can take to make the planet better is not always easy. It's definitely a very difficult task, but we know that this is a marathon and not a sprint. We realize that we have to keep doing the work, keep telling as much people as we can, and that when we do our bits little by little, we can possibly turn the tides and learn to adapt to climate change. Very interesting indeed. We've got less than a minute to end the chat, sadly, but uh, to do the work that you're doing, you obviously need funding. There seems to be a move on the part of the world's biggest finance institutions to pledge trillions of dollars to the green cause. Um, what, how do, you, what, do you see that as a pivotal moment to support the sort of work that you do briefly? Well, yes, definitely. I've been doing this work for about five years with Susty Vibes. So we know that now that our conversations are now mainstream, it was never mainstream. Now it's several organizations, the media, they're all interested in this issue. Lots of requests for interviews are coming for us. We know that this is a pivotal town moment. Lots of interest is coming and we know that we would be supported. But it's not just for greenwashing. Co countries, communities and even institutions really have to be passionate about this course because that's how we would win jennifer uh, i congratulate you on the work that you're doing and i also want to thank you exceedingly for joining us today from glasgow and jennifer uchendu is a nigerian climate activist <laughs>